Hey, what's up guys? This is Hardy again with Ninja Every Day. And I wanted to do a video showing you some tricks that can help you start a fire if you ever backpacking, camping, or hunting. And you need to start a fire. The weather's less than ideal. Maybe everything is wet. And maybe you don't have any like fire starting tricks with you. You don't have a fire bug that you pack. So we're gonna look at a couple of plants that we can find here in the eastern woodlands that can help us out and then we'll talk about setting ourselves up for success when it comes to starting our fire so stay tuned and hopefully we'll show you some stuff that'll make you look like a uh, a hero out in the woods next time you're tasked with starting a fire to keep you warm cook your food or just for hanging out so what i'm walking around looking for now is a red cedar tree. We've all seen that uh, wood that has the, the bright red or purple inside. It has that very distinct cedar smell. One of the cool characteristics of a cedar tree is that type of bark that's on the outside can be peeled off and processed down into a, uh, into a tender bundle. So here you can see this cedar tree. And as we get closer, you can see this bark peeling off in strips. Starting to hang off a little bit. So again, this is that red cedar tree and the bark is starting to hang off and this one's perfect. It's got a bunch of pieces that are already kind of hanging loose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to pull it off in strips and I'm gonna save that, take it back to where we're gonna make our fire and show you how we'll process that into something that will take a spark and something that will uh, take a flame very well. Of course, I'd like it to be on a standing tree so that it's a lot more dry. When this stuff is wet, it can be so wet that it doesn't work that great. So you can see I've got several big strips of this. I'm gonna take it back to camp. I'm gonna break it down and we'll see how it does in terms of catching a spark and in terms of taking a flame. Stay tuned. So that last bunch of cedar that I had was pretty garbage. It was uh, super dry and just crumbled in my hand. So I went off and I found another cedar tree and the bark literally peeled off in these big strips, which is what I'm looking for for making the uh, bark. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and try to just mess it up until I get a really fine bird's nest material. So I'm gonna keep processing this down, but this is what it starts to look like at the end. Very fluffy, like a, a ball of loose burlap or something. Now this is a little damp, but it's still gonna work pretty well to catch a flame and may catch a spark. So the other kind of bark that we can use to make a tinder bundle out of besides cedar is the bark from tulip poplar. Now tulip poplar is kind of a, uh, almost like grayish and purplish sort of wood. And you've seen it because it's the stick that when you break it, the bark is always kind of hanging on and it peels off in big fibrous strips like this. And these big, strips can be processed and broken down into a tender bundle. Now, as you may see, the bark that I'm pulling from this stick is wet. But I'm gonna leave it hanging in a tree in my campsite so that it gets a chance to dry out with the wind and later on, not today, but later on, I can use it to make a tinder bundle. And now I'm gonna take some decently dry strips 
of tulip poplar bark and process them just like we did the cedar bark to get it ready to catch a spark or catch a flame. The general properties I'm looking for are super fluffy and no big chunks of bark in it. The big chunks of bark are less important when you're catching a spark or you're um, using a flame, but if you're gonna use it as a tinder bundle for a bow drill or hand drill fire, those big chunks of bark can actually serve to cut the coal up and mess up that taking the coal from the coal to the flame process. So the friction fire, you need to be more specific about how much and how fine you process it. So this is the tulip poplar bark broken down into a bird's nest sort of material. Still some big chunks of bark in there, so I would be better served to go ahead and process it further. But if I'm just using a flame or a spark, this is probably fine. This is a cautionary picture. This is a really fuzzy vine. Looks like it would be great for making a tinder bundle out of but this vine is poison ivy. So of course it can give you a, uh, a skin reaction, but if you burn it, the oils will go out in the smoke and you can actually breathe the oil in and it can cause a poison ivy reaction inside your lungs. So super, super dangerous. So please don't use the brown fuzzy vines for your tender bundle. So now as I'm walking, what I'm looking for is a birch tree paper birch river birch the white tree that has curly paperish bark that sort of peels off from the sides if the tree is alive there are oils natural oils in that bark that take a flame very easily the birch bark also works pretty well even when it's wet and the way that we're going to use it today, you need a flame. So I'm, I'm going to head, I'm going to stay near the water, near the creek, and even head up towards the pond because these birches tend to like uh, to be a little closer to water. So this is one of those birch trees again near the water. And you can see this sort of the bark peeling off is what I'm looking for to help me start my fire. Again, this bark needs to almost peel off like paper. So you can see several pieces here that I'm gonna process, or I'm gonna collect to start my fire with. So this is the size of the handful that I collected. I'm gonna take that back to camp and we'll show you how that uh, can work out for us as well. Again, this is birch bark. So first I wanna look at this birch bark and show you how well this takes a flame and how bright it burns. It's just a regular big lighter. Barely touched it with the flame, and that birch bark is going. Due to the oils that are in the bark, this burns very hot and very brightly, even burns pretty well when it's wet. It burns fast, so you've only got a few minutes to build your fire up on top of that. The pitch wood can accept a spark and a flame and works exceptionally well if everything else around you is wet and you've got to start enough of a fire to sort of dry out the rest of your stuff. As I'm walking around looking for the birch and for the uh, cedar, I'm also keeping my eyes out for anything else that may be useful. Here's a standing dead pine log. I'm gonna see if I can bust that open and see if there's any pitch wood inside that. So sure enough, inside that stump after I kicked it over, 
there is some pitch wood. You can see that yellow coloration as indicative of that pitch or sap or resin. Here's the piece that I kicked off is getting the light. You see how it glows that bright yellow and orange and it smells smells just right. So I'm gonna collect some more of this pitch wood from this standing pine stump and we can take it back and show how it can be used in a fire as well. Here you can see a pile of dust that I used the, uh, the edge of my knife to scrape off of this piece of pitch wood so that I can use it to catch a spark. So most of the time in my fire kit, I have some sort of ferrocerium rod along with a lighter and quite often some matches too. Uh, so that I have, you know, multiple ways to get a fire in case my lighter was to run out or to get broken or if it um, got too wet or it was too cold for it to function, I would have the uh, opportunity to use that ferro rod. The name of the game in fire making success is preparation. If you can have everything ready and laid out appropriately separated before you spark the spark or strike your lighter, you have a better chance for success. Also, if you over prepare you're going to be better off now this is the separation that i would use and you've got three parts to your fire making fuel the first part is your tinder what you're going to start your fire with this is our tulip poplar tinder bundle this is strips of tulip poplar bark before it's been processed into this bird's nest. This is the collection of birch bark. This is the cedar tender bundle. This is the cedar bark before it was processed. So again, we've got a bird's nest here and here. We've got something that'll catch a flame here. This is our pitch wood powder that we scraped off with the edge of the knife. These are feather sticks. Inside every wet piece of wood is a dry piece of wood. 
So we feathered up this wood and here even better is a feathered piece of pitch wood. These are little slices of pitch wood that I have set aside. So once I get something going, I can feed it with that and that will ensure that it burns hot. But once I go from tinder to kindling, I'd like to have my sticks set up that are wire sized, super, super small pieces of sticks. Some of these are even too big. Then we go from this kindling into the bigger fuel. I start working into pen, uh, pencil diameter pieces of wood and then gradually bigger and gradually bigger pieces of fuel. So again, we go from tinder and then that is built up into this kindling and then gradually, progressively larger pieces of fuel. So if you remember a few tricks when you're in the woods and you've got to start a fire, remember that birch bark works fairly well to catch a flame even when it's wet. Pine pitch or pitch wood or fat wood works well to catch a spark and will catch flame and can make a feather stick that burns very hot and very bright. Remember that inside of each wet piece of wood is a dry piece of wood. All you've got to do is get to it. You can baton and split it 
and to further create surface area, you can make a feather stick. Cedar bark and tulip poplar bark can both be processed into a fluffy, tender bundle, and they work great when they're dry. When you're camping, when you get to a spot, even if you don't think you're gonna need it, take some of that tulip poplar bark and cedar bark and hang it up in the branch of a tree so that it can dry out. So that if nothing else works later on, once that's a little more dry, you'll have something that will maybe catch your spark or catch your flame. Prepare for your fire before you try to light it. Break, uh, break up your fuel into kindling and then into bigger fuel and have it staged and ready. Remember to start with wire size or as small sticks as possible. The little end branches on, the, on a cedar tree or on a hemlock tree or something like that, when it's dead, are the best. But wire size sticks first. Remember those tricks, try them out. Let me know in the comments how they work for you. Let me know how you like the video as well. Love everybody, you don't know, you don't know what everybody's going through. Peace.